Everybody has the same 24 hours in a day. How is it that some businesses and some solo business operators manage to achieve so much more, make so much more money um, than others, where others really try really hard, struggle a lot, and don't seem to get the same results? What is the difference? What makes the difference in earning more money in the same 24 hours? How do we maximize that? What can you do to get the most amount of revenue in the shortest period of time? Welcome to Share.Care, an all-inclusive community sharing experience, strength, and hope to create strong, healthy, and inspiring relationships. Share.Care communities work toward every individual feeling safe, valued, and heard, free from the threat of danger, pain, or harm. Each episode, founder Damian Andrews explores the principles underpinning Share.Care and invites expert special guests to share their knowledge so you can easily reap the benefits so many others experience. You hold the choice to create your future. Let it be with strong, healthy, and inspiring relationships. Hello and welcome to an On The Couch episode of the Share.Care podcast. Our belief is that global peace starts at home. Feeling safe, valued, and heard gives you a foundation to confidently step out and make the world a happier and safer place for everyone. Because in today's world, it's in your own selfish best interest to help others. Today we're going to talk about how to maximize your time to get the most revenue, whether you're working for yourself as a, an entrepreneur or whether you're working as part of a bigger, bigger organization. So you might own a company that's earning a lot of money. The principles are the same here. But it's all about when you look at it and you compare you know, companies, you will look at someone, for example, like Richard Branson. You know, he has the same 24 hours in his day as you have in yours. You're very equal on that. Everyone's equal on that. There's no one that can get more hours in the day. We can maximize the hours that we have. We can maybe we can sleep a little bit less and um, we can do that. But even people that perform really well, I understand from what I've read that Elon Musk, who does achieve tremendous amount in a day, um, has eight hours sleep. So that still you know, leaves him with you know 16 hours in the day to accomplish things. Um, so what is the difference? What makes the difference? Well, you've probably all heard that it's, you know, it's not how much time you have, it's what you do with that time. And that's yeah, largely true. It is what you do with the time. And, and obviously there's a balance that you need to find as well, because we have a number of things that we need to do. Obviously we talked about rest, you need sleep and, and having a decent amount of sleep does impact. And um, I must say, from my perspective, I'm probably not always the best at that. Sometimes I, I work for too long and have too little sleep and then I need to, to catch up. So I wouldn't recommend that. Um, and that's something I'm personally working on to make sure I get the correct amount of sleep. It does make a big difference in your life. And with the waking hours, what do we do? Well, I mean, there's things that we need to do. We want to spend time with family and loved ones, that's really important. We need to make sure that we have that time. We need some time for our health as well. So we've got to balance that out. So we need to carve out all those times, which is you know, fair enough, and we, we need to do that. What we're going to focus on here is the time that you you spend on, on your business. Um, and part of you know, the share principles is, is money. So how do we maximize the time that we earn money for and, and this is a more focused on a, a business side of things today rather than personal finances it's a little bit different but similar there are some ways to relate this to earning income certainly if you're looking for promotions and, and greater income the principles do apply to uh, some degree but we're mostly focusing on business here and the reason we can do this is when I look at for example um, companies that I've worked with and there's a number of companies that I've helped them increase their revenue substantially very quickly. Um, one company um, in, in mind is, is a, it was a small family business. 
um, that we're turning over eight million dollars, and in eighteen months it took them to seventeen million dollars. So that's you know um, more than doubled their revenue in eighteen months, and it wasn't you know particularly difficult too because when we look at what we did, the thing we want to look at is um, what I call return on effort, the ROE, not ROI, you know, return on investment, ROI, return, ROE, well, generally for most accounting will be a return on equity. I'm going to say return on effort. What is the, the return that you're getting from the effort that you're spending? And for a business, it really, there are really only four things a business needs to do. Um, yeah, we can break it down into a lot of other different categories, but the reality is there's four things that a, that a business needs to do, and um, let's work through these backwards. The first one is, or the fourth one, I should say, the fourth one is administration. Now, this is all the stuff that in the background needs to happen for the business to work. So you, you're talking about um, bookkeeping, you know, HR, so personnel, dealing with personnel, hiring, firing, all that kind of stuff. IT falls into that category. All those kind of things in the background that need to happen. And, and if you're a solo operator, what also you, you put in there, checking your emails, organizing your calendar, all those kind of things, that falls into administration, making sure that you know, the meetings are, are booked, all, all that kind of stuff. And that's that's administration. And it does need to happen um, to for your business to operate. When you say, whether it's a solo, whether you're a solo person or whether you're a, um, you know, a large organization, um, they, the, the administration side of things needs to happen. But the thing is, it won't grow your business. So adding more bookkeeping is not going to grow your business. Adding more HR, well, in, in a sense, adding more HR if you need to add more pe personnel, but just adding more people to the business is not necessarily going to grow the business. Um, in more cases, it won't. Um, adding the right people, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, adding more IT is not going to grow the business. So it's not a function of doing more administration. That's not going to help. Um, and same token too, when you look at that, especially if you're a, a solo operator um, or even a partnership, just a couple of people, how many times have you started your day doing things like reading emails, organizing your inbox, um, and doing all these other administrative tasks, organizing the, the tea room, organizing all these kind of things, all that stuff is not going to grow the business, but we spend a lot of time doing it. And so the time that you spend on these things needs to be proportionate to its impact on the growth of the business. Now, the third area, so the fourth was administration, the third area that you know a business undertakes tasks is in operations. And this is all the stuff that needs to be done to deliver your product or service. So if it's you know it's manufacturing, you know all the different steps in getting the source materials, um, putting them together in and converting those sort of raw materials into a product that you're going to sell. If you're a service business, it's about you know having all you know might be the case of having manuals in place, all the, the different things to enable you to deliver that service. And that's where you know. Operations can get a little bit tricky because what you need to do is, I mean, obviously you need to deliver the right quality without spending too much money and it's a balance between that. So you want to make sure you know, there is the quality there, it's delivered on time, but also to you don't want to be spending too much time on it, but also to, to the expectation that you've set for your clients as well. I mean, if you've set an expectation that you're going to be delivering um, you know, an everyday car, for example, and you, and you deliver a gold-plated Rolls-Royce, um, you're well above what that expectation is and probably spending a lot of money you don't need to. And that, that's a, an operations thing in setting you know, your operational goals. And what relates to that as well is also the culture that falls within operations for the purpose of what we're talking about here. Um, you know, normally, I will se separate that out. If you're goal setting, we'll separate out. We'll go income operations and culture but for the purpose of this exercise when we're talking about operations we're talking about you know, how the business operates and we put the culture in in that category as well the next part to the function that a business must do to operate is marketing now many people confuse marketing with generating income and, and that's um, 
that's not the case. Marketing is about building the brand and letting people know that you exist. So it's, you know, it's this process of letting people know that, you know, you are here, here you are, um, what you're about, what's the problem that you solve. That's what marketing is. Marketing is telling people that you exist, what you do, and the problems that you solve, which is needed to be, because if no one knows you exist, they're not going to come to you. They're not going to know where to find you. So your marketing, um, you know, that includes you know, creating you know, your website. Um, it can be creating a, a what they call as a sales funnel. So it's you know creating running ads to, that you know lead to clicks on the website. That might be the case. The the marketing leads to um, people finding out about your business. So it could be an email. You might be sending out you know regular emails which touch base. The whole aim of marketing is you, you want to be um, top of mind awareness. So whatever the problem is that you solve or the area that you operate in, you want to have that reputation um, so that you're first um, top of mind. So you, you come to the person's mind before anybody else. And, and when you think about that, I mean, one of the, the you know, when you think about the number of different brands out there, if you want to get something somewhere overnight, uh, FedEx is top of mind. If you want um, a cool, refreshing drink, Coca-Cola is top of mind for most people. And that's what marketing is about, is about creating that awareness that when someone thinks about your problem or the problem you solve, um, they think about you. So the problem, you know, I need to get a parcel somewhere overnight, you know, top of mind, FedEx uh, for most people. So that, that's what you want to do. That's the aim of your marketing is to make sure that you create that top of mind awareness. But the thing that a lot of people confuse is that marketing itself doesn't generate sales. It doesn't actually lead to extra income, it just leads to people knowing about you. Um, and an example of that um, from a friend of mine who has a very successful business uh, and he, um, he has some, some well-known ads uh, and uh, originally the business only advertised on radio and, and created a very successful and he created a successful brand around um, his personality on the radio to the extent that someone picked that up and did a rap version of him um, doing this ad, which was, you know, and that went viral on, on YouTube and a number of things like that. And so it created a lot of lot more awareness of his business, his brand, um, that kind of thing. But it didn't, when it went viral, it had no impact on sales at all none didn't change um anything at all and it was it went viral for a while but it was yeah it just had no impact on his sales and that's the point when i highlight is that marketing building awareness does not necessarily well it does very rarely will it lead to additional income that's where you we need to go to the first part that you need to do is is sales um sales is a, a completely different process now, sales is what, what we're doing with sales is we're taking someone who's aware of a business, of your business, aware that you solve a particular problem. They're aware that you do that. Sales is the process of then building that trust is what you want to overcome. At, at the key thing you want to overcome is their confidence that you are going to do what you say you can do, that you can solve this problem. And that's the sales process in a nutshell. I know there's lots of sales books out there and things like that. But in a nutshell, what you're doing is you're taking someone who has a problem, um, who's aware that you solve that problem, and you're taking it to the next level of them having confidence that you can do what you say you can do. Because if you've got all those three together, um, then that is where the sales process falls into line and, and you make the sale. Um, there's a part to component to do with pricing, of course, where there's a, whether it's a value compared to other people that they believe can do that. Um, and that's where distinctions in, in, in your value proposition make sense in uh, making you a different, um, what you're offering different from other people, giving you that distinction, um, that what you're offering is, is a different service to other people. That's a, another conversation. Now, what we want to be doing is, is, 
understanding the four steps within the business. So it's one of these administration tasks that you need to do. There's operational tasks that you need to do. There's marketing, which is bringing attention to who you are and the problem you solve. And then the sales process of actually getting people to believe that you will do what you say you do. And that's once we, we cross all those hurdles, um, we get the sale. Now, the thing that increases the, the revenue most, and, it's, and I know this is a rhetorical question because we've just gone through that and when it should be fairly obvious, is sales. So when you look at you know, your business and what you spend your time in during the day, how much of that is actually spent on sales? So a lot of times, most people get up, they'll check their emails, they'll, you know, they'll do a whole bunch of other tasks um, that are, you know, the business needs, but does it really need to the extent that it needs, that you're doing, sorry. Does it really need the extent of time that you're spending on these tasks, or do you really need to be focusing on the sales component, spending more time on sales. And that's where you really need to be spending a large amount of time on the sales process. And that's when you look at someone like, for example, Richard Branson, he was able to rapidly increase Virgin's income, but they spent a lot of time on the sales component. They spent a lot of time within that company going, how do we make that sales? Yes, there was all the other stuff as well. They had administration, they needed to have emails, they needed to have a website, all that kind of stuff, and they did that. They needed to have operation. Obviously, Virgin Airlines, for example, needed to have planes. It needed to have a way of operating planes. It needed to have a way of training staff. It needed to have a culture which you know, created its own unique brand or fit within its own unique brand. So it needed to have those operations. It needed to have marketing. And obviously, it, you know, the website was part of the marketing, um, letting ads are part of that marketing, all that kind of thing. And then it was the sales process of, all right, how do we, we give people the confidence that we're going to deliver what we say we're going to deliver. And that's when those sales are made. And so this is when I was looking at, and I mentioned my client earlier, um, and I've had a number of clients who've done exactly the same thing, where they were doing the opposite of, of what they needed to do. They were spending very, very little amount of time on sales. They were spending more time organizing the offers. They, they, they did spend a bit on marketing. Um, they were spending a lot on operations, a lot of time on operations, which is, is needed. But by comparison to the sales generating new ability to do the operations, uh, the, the operations was, was well out of proportion, so much more than where the sales needed to be. And what we did, um, so, we, yeah, so from that perspective, it was like, well, how do we increase sales? And, and for them, it was pretty simple. <laughs> It was, and this is, you might find this is fairly obvious for a lot of people in, in yourself when you, when you, when I say this, is I said to them, I said, get on the phone now um, and call up the current clients, call up your past clients and ask them how they're going. Ask them, find out what's going on for their business and what problems they currently have. Get on the phone and speak to them. And what that did was that almost immediately resulted in an increase. Just, just those phone calls in the first day, they had two new projects to do um, from those phone calls. And that's where the difference is. When we're looking at, okay, how much time we have in a day, it's not, um, it's not that you need to have more time. It's how you maximize that time and understanding what is going to have the impact on you achieving what you want to achieve. And from a business perspective, to increase sales, and then that's what we're focusing on here is to increase. There's lots of things you need to set goals in in a business and, and there's different focuses you need that. But to increase sales, you need to focus on sales. I mean, I know it's obvious when you say it that way, but many times we just don't do that. People will go, I want, it, I want more revenue. Um, but they're not focusing on the tasks that create more revenue, doing all these other peripheral things that you know, maybe need to be done, but do they really? Um, and, and if you've got to prioritize, you have a finite amount of time, and that's the most valuable thing anybody has is time because it can never be replaced. Um, how do you use that? 
what do you do within that that finite period that you have you have 24 hours in a day you need to sleep you need to do some exercise you need to eat you need to spend time with loved ones the bit that's left over for you to do your business how do you do that what do you do within that time and that's where it's really important to know where to focus it and sales is a big key where you need to focus your time and i mean it doesn't happen immediately either you need to be mindful that with that client that I mentioned, yes, they got a couple of sales immediately, largely because they hadn't been in contact with these clients um, and they're just picking the low-hanging fruit, which is a good thing to do. It's always important to pick the low-hanging fruit because uh, it's easy. <laughs> it's very simple. You just go and grab it nice and easy and you've got some, some extra income. But be mindful too that sometimes it does take a little bit of time. So once you've picked that low-hanging fruit, the rest is you've got to go through those processes. You've got to make sure that your operations is delivering what it says it's going to do, the quality is there. You need to make sure there's marketing to allow other people to learn about you. Um, and part of that operations and marketing is also allowing, you know, making sure that you deliver, or we mentioned deliver the quality. But then, yeah, then you need to be doing the sales component. You need to be showing that you can actually be trusted to deliver what you say you're going to deliver. So, yeah, have a think about that from the perspective of your day. You know, when you're looking at, you know, am I getting the most, most, how is my return on effort going? When I'm spending um, effort, when I'm, exu um, when I'm taking action, that's, you know, that's effort that I'm doing. What is the likely return from that effort? So if you're looking at you know, emails or you're reorganizing your inbox, what's the likelihood that that's going to generate the extra income that you want? If, you know, we're talking about having a goal of extra income. So is reorganizing in that moment, is reorganizing your inbox um, likely to generate more income? Probably not. So make the most of your day. Structure your day around overcoming the potential risks of purpose. Uh, purchase, sorry, not purpose. Overcoming the potential risks of purchase, your client. When you do that, once you've got all that sorted, that you've gone and done the tasks that are going to lead to sales, then go and do the other thing. And you'll find, you know, there's a lot of things that you were doing previously that you won't do, and it won't even matter. That you probably don't need that. You don't need, you know, to reorganize, you know, rebrand your website every. You know, 12 months, it's not going to result in, it's probably going to be more detrimental because um, people will, you know, a creature's a habit. Um, and if you've got a new website and they're looking for you and they might look at it and not recognize who you are and, and skip off it and then go, oh, I can't find that business. Um, that's a branding thing, which falls under marketing, different exercise. But make sure when you think about your day, how do we, we really want to make sure that, you know, we can have the time that we need and maximize how we use our time. Use it the right way and your life is pretty easy. Uh, use it the wrong way and you're going to struggle. So focus on what are the key things, focus on your return on effort. What are the key things that are going to give you the maximum amount of result from the least amount of effort? Thank you for being part of the Share.Care community and helping people around the world prosper. You're creating a bigger pie for everyone to share. The more people contributing to the world being a better place, the better the world becomes for others and for you.